Hello and welcome to the Studio Nora podcast. If you're new here, uh, you will not know that this is not my studio, but my living room. Um, and you might not know that this is a podcast about knitting, sewing and any and all other creative pursuits. <laughs> because my attention span sometimes isn't very long. If you've been here before, welcome back. It's lovely to have you. Join me today as I've been jumping into some spring knits and I have many plants and something about flower bombs. So let's get into it. So, um, let me start off by uh, saying that I hope you have a nice warm beverage, or cold, or, you know, something to keep you company, some knitting or some crafting. I am drinking uh, from my one of my favorite mugs, because I'm the DM, that's why it is uh, a Sunday as I'm recording this, and it's afternoon. Uh, we're going to play D&D, and I'm the DM, so I'm the game master and uh, people have to listen to me. <laughs> uh, I am wearing uh, a linen cielo top that I made last year from scraps um, and it has these nice bands and then hold on let me turn around the back has this nice like shoulder detail it is a closet core pattern yeah, it's called closet, closet core. Yes, pretty sure I'll <laughs> drop it down here. Um, and I have several of these tops. Uh, this one is in linen, but I also have one in viscose. Um, and I have one from a fabric that I'm not quite sure what it is. And it's probably plastic and I don't wear it that much. But when I just started sewing, I didn't know what was what. Uh, and I'm planning on making another one because I really like them. So before we dive into my episode, I wanted to say a heartfelt thank you to all the lovely, lovely people who responded to uh, my episode last time, three weeks ago, where I discussed having some anxiety surrounding the statistics of YouTube. And I have to say, even recording that episode was already really cathar cathartic, is that the word, for me? Um, because I like to process things while talking about them. And then just all your lovely comments, they, yeah, they really helped me. And I'm happy to report that even though I didn't throw off the YouTube studio app from my phone, it is from my home screen. Uh, and I check it occasionally um, for comments and I love replying to comments, which is great. And several people unsubscribed after last episode, which was fine. And several people subscribed after last episode, which was also fine because what I would really like is for people to be here because they want to be here and, you know, to cultivate a nice community and I think we're well on our way of doing that. On a related note, um, I was watching uh, Amber from A Lovely Yarn. Uh, she has a podcast here on YouTube as well. And uh, I have been watching her for some time. She has 30 plus episodes. So I, I think I jumped in like two or three ago and I really like it. She has a... Uh, yeah, lovely vibe and she likes to think about things and think about things while she's talking which is something I can relate to and I was watching her latest episode and then towards the end I uh, I got very happy because she re recommended this podcast to her viewers um, I don't know it was very surreal because I didn't expect it at all and then suddenly somebody was talking about me in a very positive way and uh, yeah, it was really nice. So if you are in the market for yet another podcast, uh, A Lovely Yarn is high on my recommendations list. 
and yeah that was really nice okay so let's get into uh this podcast i have two finished objects for you and i'm pretty proud let me get them so one you have seen before oh i forgot this last end oh there's so many cat hairs on it and my hairs oh no um there are my vanilla socks there's two of them now uh they are in the mondim and it's oh look there's more hair uh color 202 also i hope that the sound is okay because usually i film in my studio but because spring is on its way uh, there are still lights coming in through the window at my studio and I tried to film there but I was just squinting all the time and everything was blown out uh, so I decided to relocate downstairs which is kind of scary because it's Sunday morning uh, my husband is still sleeping and it's kind of awkward to be talking to you guys you folks when there is another person in the house um also warning at some point i might have to get up to let in the cats uh because he likes to know what's up and i close the door so my husband won't hear me <laughs> um yeah so finished object very excited to wear them um a note on my sock blockers they're these lovely bees um but I actually wear size 39 uh, shoes um, and these are size S which are for I think 36 to 38 or something because I have the larger blockers for my actual size but I found that it blocks it out too big um, which is really annoying so these you can tell that they're slightly like the socks are not super snugly on them um, but they do fit really well after this blocking light um, so if you find that your sock blockers block out too big just get smaller ones trade them with somebody who I guess is a size down I'm not sure but my tip is to get smaller blockers yeah, and I'm really happy with them. I haven't worn them yet because I only finished them yesterday or the day before. Not sure. But check, they're finally done. Okay, then I have a surprise because I knit this in a week. Um, and I have to say, there's a bandwagon and I jumped on it and the bandwagon is called Ranunculus. Um, and it all started because I had this um, order from Studio Solas coming in with some blue face Lester and it was just so lovely. Um, so I knit this. It's the little Ranunculus. Um, it's the first time actually that I have done lace. Well, if you're a knitter and you've been knitting, you probably will have heard of the Ranunculus, but if you haven't, um, it is basically a pattern that uh, everybody has made, but you can make it in whatever yarn you want. Um, and there are several sizes, which has to do with, because uh, it's, it's a yoke, and then there's a little bit of raglan shaping. Um, but it's actually the first time I've done lace um, and I've been quite hesitant about doing lace work because I've been overthinking it I guess because usually my way of doing things is not knowing anything about it jumping fully in and then just following directions and usually it turns out all right for example my first sweater was a color work sweater um the drama sweater by jennifer steingas which you might have seen uh and it turned out fine and i didn't know that color work was something that was well it's not difficult but it's a thing right and i didn't know that so i just jumped in but then with lace work i developed this thing where i was like yeah that's difficult 
so I didn't do it. But then this this yarn, this skein just told me it wanted to be a cropped summer top. Um, so I went and did that. I'm really happy with it. Um, the yarn is here. I have another skein, uh, so it's this blue faced Lester, and it's so pretty. 100% um, pure wool, approximately 30, 350 meters per 100 grams, so it's like sport weight, I guess. And the needle size recommended is two and a half to three and a half, but I used a five. The pattern for the ranunculus recommends six, but I started with a six because it's top down. Um, and I actually ripped it out several times because I didn't like the fabric. I did not want to swatch because I just wanted to make something. You ever have that where you're just like urged to make now? Um, so I just ripped out uh, the beginning several times until I landed on a five <clears throat> and I did block quite aggressively um, I'm gonna pop in a picture of uh, of my blocking because I have questions um, because I use the pins but I find that the pins well if you block aggressively it's gonna drag right so I don't know should I be blocking differently I know nothing of blocking really. I just blocked this one out because I tried it on when it was finished and it was quite tight. So I just went into blocking, like just trying to make it as big as possible. And now it fits chef's kiss. I will put in some stuff of me wearing it. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. So I wanted to make this out of one skein. I don't know why I had two. Uh, but it was just a challenge that I had and I just thought well, I just I I did the recommended um, Stockinettes uh, and I just thought I'll do the twisted rib until I run out uh, And I did think about the fact that I had to bind off but I didn't account for how much I needed to bind off so actually you might notice that um, Oh, you might not this is bound off with the yarn itself. And then here <laughs> we move over to uh, a different yarn. Uh, and again, I did not want to break into this one skein. So I used some blue face Lester Masham that I have from the lovely Emma and her company is, well, most, I guess, well, no, you might not know, but I'm obsessed with her. Emma Robinson from the Woolly Mammoth Fiber Company. Uh, before Brexit, um, I ordered some things from her. And uh, yeah, I just used that. Brexit is really... Well, there's several thing issues with Brexit, right? But um, the problem now, for me personally... Um, is that when you order something from the UK, you have to go through customs and one that takes very long because of reasons not known to me. Uh, and two, you're never sure how much tax or import you have to pay because it changes wildly, which is really annoying. But um, back to the ranunculus. One thing that I found really interesting, sorry, it's just shedding season. Um, is that you use a, yeah, you can just see this, so it's not a problem if I give it away. Uh, you use a half twisted rib for the collar and for the bottom. And what that does is that if you would use normal rib in a loose gauge, it would just blow out and you couldn't really see the structure, but because you twist the knit stitches, it twists into itself. And that makes, I believe, that you can still see these edges, which is really clever. Yeah, <coughs> excuse me. Learned a lot. It's really fun. I knitted in a week, um, which is the fastest time I've ever knit something in. And I wore it yesterday to my grandmother and she really liked it. Um, 
Yeah. The only thing is, because it's naturally dyed with indigo, and when you uh, knit with indigo yarn, you always get like, it gives off a little color still uh, when you like rub it that intensely. So I usually have like stripes down my fingers and my hands. Um, but yesterday it was an okay warm day. <laughs> And I wore it with just a tank top underneath, but I got some blue uh, blue stripes down my armpit because of the yarn. But I think uh, give it another wear and give it another wash and it won't do that anymore. Um, and if it does, I don't really care. You just take a shower and it's off. It's not like it's harmful or anything. Um, so yeah, really like the pattern. Really like love the yarn. Um, because Blue Face Lester, it has, oh, there's more hairs. How are there more hairs? Um, Blue Face Lester has a kind of, I don't know if you can tell, but it has a kind of sheen to it. And it's super soft. This is two ply. Um, I'm not sure if it's gonna pill a lot because it's so soft. But yeah, it's, you can, you can almost feel the, the sheen of it, and it's really lovely. So, check. Jumped on the bandwagon, did not hate it. Um, I might, if I make a second one for myself, I might make one with little sleeves, but I've also been thinking that uh, this one might make a good present for a friend, uh, because most of my friends are less broad than me. Um, so then if I make this, they're also, they don't have large chests like me. So if I knit this a little bit, I could make it fit them as well. Well, it fits me. So one skein is enough. The only thing I have to account for is binding off takes yarn and more yarn than you think. I think I needed like two meters extra that I did not account for. I'm sorry if you can hear that. People are starting to wake up on this Sunday morning uh, and the sun is starting to be proof. So let's continue. Um, Vernunculus, vanilla socks, check. Oh yes. So I'm on the lookout for a new sock uh, because I like having socks on the go because they're good waiting room, knitting, projects um and i have the 52 weeks of socks book that is upstairs and not here because relocation um but i was wondering if you have a recommendation from that book or a different pattern for for a sock pattern that is like textured but repetitive not cables because i don't like having to do the tiny cables um but I would like to knit on something that is like repetitive, easy to memorize, and then just, you know, something nice to knit on. Because I have somewhere, oh here, I have, I think, 40 grams left of this Mondine, but I have a lot of different sock yarn that still wants to become socks. And I think if I use a solid, not this one, because this one is uh, variegated. But if I use a solid with a texture, that could be really nice. So any advice on either blocking or sock patterns or life advice? I don't know. Okay. Works in progress. I have a sweater bag still with a work in progress, but I made a lot of progress. The only reason that it's not finished yet is because I got distracted by the ranunculus. Oh look, there's hair on this too. So not only am I shedding, but our cat Sammy is also shedding. Um, so yeah. Um, last time you saw this, I don't even think I finished the body, but... Oh. Here we go. Um, so I finished the body and I finished the first sleeve and I started the second sleeve and I started decreases. I did the bind off with 
a surprisingly twisty bind off or something where I just flip around your right needle and then bind off normally every time. No. So I would be horrible at making how-to videos, but basically when you have, when you're binding off, you always have one stitch on your right needle and you flip that around and then you bind off the next one and you flip it. Uh, and that makes for a very twisty bind off. Um, I did, so I knit the whole sweater in four millimeters. Yeah, four, uh, but for the um, the collar work as well. But the collar work on the arm, I went up to a four and a half because I know that on the small circumference, my uh, gauge gets tighter. And I thought with, um, with the collar work on the arm, it would be good to have, you know, some room so I can actually stick my hand through it. Um, really happy with it. The only thing, so basically this show is just me asking you for advice. Uh, the only thing is, so you make decreases. Uh, I did, I did a modification on the body. I left the things on. So I decreased, uh, three times and then I increased only twice because, um, I don't really have hips. They're just straight. Um, so I didn't want to have extra fabric there. So because I didn't think about the fact that I only decreased twice, I made a little mess up of the color work on the bottom um, because I should have had either two more or two less stitches, but mwah, you can see it over there, but it's not that noticeable. It's fine, it's on the side of my body. But what I do want your advice on is so you decrease using uh, knit two together and uh, slip slip knit. And the knit two together, I, I'm not sure if you will see this, but so the knit two together is over there and you can't really see that. But the slip slip knits, they always make this, this noticeable stitch. And I, I've got it also on the sleeves where you can maybe see it well this is really nitpicking picking right but you can just you see these bumps and you don't see well you see less bumps on the other side so i was wondering if i'm doing something wrong because when i do a slip slip knit i just slip two stitches knit wise and then i stick my left needle behind well, in front of them, closer to me, and then I knit it. But it creates this thing. And I tried doing them pro-wise, but that didn't really matter or make sense. So I'm wondering if I'm doing something wrong. Let's sit up straight. I'm sitting on a pillow. I need to sit up straight. Uh, yeah, so I'm wondering if I'm doing something wrong, if you have any advice um, on that. Because I'm flabbergasted. I don't know. Sometimes I notice that I really, I'm a rookie when it comes to knitting, also sewing, but I've done a lot of sewing techniques already and I feel quite confident with that. But with knitting, I don't know. Knitting has been around for so long, so, well, sewing too. But <clears throat> do you have advice for me? That's the question. Okay, so that is my work in progress and I think that it will be finished this week right in time for the warm weather to arrive again but at least it will be done and ready for me to wear when it's cold yes okay so that's my first work in progress very low on works in progress because i finished my works and you know okay let's get you out of the way then exciting new things um, as you might know, I have this, well, you might not know, but I have this Mungo yarn also from Rosa Poma. Excuse me for the changing lights, but the sun is coming in and out of the clouds. 
Um, so this is really cool yarn. It's worsted weight and it is 50% cotton and 50% wool. And then it says, Mongo is a recycled wool and cotton yarn. It is entirely spun from pre-consumer waste generated by Portuguese spinning mills. The wool, is the wool used in this yarn is sourced in Portugal and or Spain. So it's completely made up of uh, waste that like it it is it is strange to me that there's a thing like pre-consumer waste so before we even have the chance to to make waste out of things there's pre-consumer waste uh so it's really nice that um rosa pomar uh makes yarn of it so I was looking for a striped pattern for a t-shirt um and I found several and you guys recommended several, but none of them really like spoke to me. Um, so what I did is I went on Ravelry and what did I do? Oh yeah, I, uh, I just looked up the yarn and then I looked at patterns in the yarn and then I saw that several people made uh, the Rift tee by Jacqueline Kieslack Designs, uh, which is a simple just straight tee. Um, and it's the gauge is 16 stitches per 10 centimeters, I think. And this one is recommended 19. Uh, so I'm knitting this sample. Well, it's a swatch, but it's the biggest swatch I ever made. And I'll probably make something of it if I don't need the yarn. But um, yeah, I was thinking this, so it's curling up, but it's basically what I thought is a nice, um, so 10, 10 rows of blue, five of white, 10 rows of blue. And I really like the um, distribution of the white like this. And I really like the, um, the floppiness because it's, it's a worsted weight. So it's quite like, this thread, it's quite a, oh, let me show you, yeah. It's quite a hefty thread, uh, hefty yarn, but with this loose gauge, I really like it. And the idea is to make a summer top out of it. And uh, yeah, I tried this thing. Let me try and show you with all the ends. Uh, because if you do stripes in the round, you're gonna get a jog, right? Cause it's just a continuous, up um, and I saw once I don't know where where you just slip the first stitch of the round when you come back to it and then it is less of a jog um, and I think that kind of worked because this is where my rows change and there's a little bit of a jog but not a ridiculous amount so I like that so yeah, I haven't bought the pattern yet because I wanted to see if I can work out this uh, swatch. So I'll just knit uh, one more row or uh, I'll finish the white and then I'll do a little bit more blue and then I'll bind it off, wash it, block it and see where we are. Yeah. Oh, by the way, it has come to my attention that saying uh, the words like and subscribe in the middle of the video is easier for people to remember uh, uh, better than when you do it at the end because when you're watching on the TV like it's done before you know it and then you forget to like so uh, if you would like to like this video uh, it'd be really nice uh, if you would like to subscribe that would also be really nice if you don't that's fine um, and what I also forgot to mention is uh, that you can find me on Instagram as Studio Nora Amsterdam and you can find me on Etsy as Studio Nora Amsterdam um, because I live in Amsterdam and um, did I forget and I wrote like I wrote a plan like I do for all my classes as well but I often forget what I am uh... yeah I'm not very active on Instagram but 
I have, am becoming a little bit more active because now I'm in a habit of filming. Uh, it's also more fun to make pictures of things, post them on Instagram. But I'm mostly lurking on Instagram. Oh, yeah, another Instagram uh, thing is that and I'm not sure how to pronounce this, but there is this lovely podcast from a lady and her podcast is called Sia Spot or Kia Spot. I will link it down below. And she did a little shout out for my podcast on Instagram. It's just, it's so surreal because I never do anything on Instagram. And then it's just like really lovely. People are nice. I really feel that like the knitting people on YouTube and then those people on Instagram, it's just, it's so nice and connected because before I always felt like Instagram was just kind of shouting into the void and you know my 20 friends that I know in real life but YouTube has a much more interpersonal connection I guess okay I'm a bit hmm pondering today I don't know Okay, so those are my works in progress. Uh, before we go to acquisitions and a bit of a personal update, because um, you might not be into that, which is perfectly fine, I do have a plan slash recommendation for you. So I was at the um, Friday, I went to the Hema, which is um, kind of like, you have Hema in different countries, I think. They basically have everything from kitchenware to clothes to food to... It's not like Walmart big, but they have a little bit of everything. Uh, and they also have this uh, Make Your Own Seed Balm. Um, and I got... It was only... So usually I don't care how expensive things are because I care about quality and not quantity. Well, I care a little, but you know, within reason. But it was only 350. And this one is to attract butterflies. And then I bought another one that is to attract bees. And I'm going to make these seed bombs. And there's lavender, poppy, snapdragon, cornflower. That's in this one. Oh, and zinnia and nastrumtium not sure different kind of flowers um and there's also one for bees i'm going to make seed bombs because i live on a second floor in uh an amsterdam building so if you've ever been to amsterdam you might know that there's not a lot of skyscrapers uh but i live in an old building i think our building is 120 years old or something it was 19 no it was 100 and something years old uh but i live in a corner uh, so we don't have a balcony or a backyard or anything um that's why i have all these plants everywhere <laughs> because i would really like a garden uh, but we do have a lot of trees outside on the pavement well not on the pavement but um next to the sidewalk and they're set in these little square dirt patches really uh and i'm just going to seed bomb everything in the hopes of having nice flowers uh there are chances that either rats will eat it dogs will poo on it but i'm going to try because flowers make me happy so that's my recommendation also a recommendation is, um, so I already mentioned the CS Bold podcast and a lovely yarn, um, but if you enjoy sewing um, and you're, well, you might be familiar with it, you might not be, but there is the Love to Sew podcast, which is an audio only podcast, uh, which is really nice. I have been listening to it for over two years and I think they just celebrated their three or four year anniversary um, and it's a um, seasonal podcast. So uh, they do three months on weekly and three months off and they just talk about everything sewing and they have many guests and they make a real effort to make sure that their uh, their episodes are diverse and inclusive, uh, which I really appreciate. 
So if you're not familiar with the Love to Sew podcast and you've been looking for an audio only podcast, Love to Sew is uh, is nice. Okay, acquisitions. Uh, the first one I can't show you because it's digital, but I will show you a little picture, uh, which is the Unarmored Defense Cowl by Cat Weaver. Uh, she brought it out, I think, two or three weeks ago, and it's, it's basically a sweater without sides or arms, but it's a cowl and then uh, a bib down the front and a bib down the back. And I really want to knit that uh, because it looks very comfy. Um, I think Cat Weaver underprices her patterns tremendously because she sells them I think for in euros it's like for something um, and she has my blessing to raise her prices um, and it made me think about something very interesting um, that she posted on Instagram there's a new pattern out I still really don't feel like a pattern designer but here it is and I met her or met her I uh, first time I encountered her was as a designer because Rebecca of the Crea Bea podcast was talking about her uh, spiritual guardian cow. Uh, so I met her as a designer uh, and I've been thinking of her as a designer. And it was really interesting uh, to, to kind of hear that she didn't feel like a proper one. So I, I, I sent her a message and I said, well, I... I've always thought of you as a designer, but so today's waffly, right? Um, it's really interesting to to compare like how we think of ourselves and how the world sees us versus how the world actually sees us, which is often very different and more positive than what we think other people might think. Okay, so unarmored defense cowl. I uh, haven't knit it yet, but it looks scrumptious delicious and i will knit one up before next um winter and i also think that they might make really good presents because they're not really complicated i think they take two skeins of dk that's fine i have skeins of dk <laughs> um so yeah okay then my other acquisition um is a studio solos order um so I already showed you this one. Uh, I got two of these uh, and it's just, you know, I love blue. Everything is blue. Lately, I've been thinking I should branch out into different colors, which is why I got this one too. Uh, it's a green, it might show up. Yeah, it's like a sage greeny green. Uh, also blue face luster uh, dyed with indigo and goldenrod. I think to get the green um, but this order really started with this one skein uh, of blue face Lester Masham do you say Masham pretty sure you say Masham um, so the Masham is a bit more coarse I guess which gives it a lot of strength uh, this is also a DK well not also that one is a sport but this is a DK so it's 120 grams uh, meters per gram so that makes it 240 per hundred. There is only this one lone pine green skein uh, because it was the only one left and I didn't want to get it on its own, but then I saw the blue and some other green. Um, it's 50 grams. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I might just treasure it because it's pretty and I, I adore this color. I might make it into a hat with some other BFL mesh in my house. Not sure. Um, so yes. Then before I show you my sweaters quantity, I wanted to show you this lovely um, business card that she has. So I'll link her down below. But um, I thought it was really pretty. And then she sent me a little note. Um, she always has lovely cards um, with her orders. Uh, last year they were from Kew Garden, um, which is a uh, botanical garden in London, and it's lovely to be there. It's like I don't like being in cities, but I love visiting London for a couple days and then going to Kew Garden and the V&A, and yeah. Um, and 
before I show you the big haul, she also sent me this lovely tote. Well, I just look at that. So it's a little uh, linen tote, just a normal tote. Does it say anything? No, it just has a card. Um, and then she sewed this, this eco print on it. And it was just, oh, made me very happy. And she also has these, uh, these nice cards. So I'll link her down below. Uh, because I also ordered my advent calendar from her and I believe as I'm recording this that there are still some left um, the theme is natural dyeing and eco printing there will be 24 mini skeins and a full undye skein and uh, like several other bits and bops and I ordered it it was a bit expensive because I ordered the full you have two options. There is one with just the skeins and the goodies. And then there's a full option, which has a pattern and an online skate as well. And I need a pattern because otherwise I'm not gonna do anything with the mini skeins. Um, so yeah, really happy. And then I got a sweater quantity of this uh, Merino DK in a very different color for me. Green. So I got 500 grams of this lovely green. Uh, I think I forgot how she dyed it, but it's probably indigo and something yellow to make it green. And it's really nice because it's really what you call this tonal, but there are many different like greens in there. Not sure if you can see it correctly. But um, it's, it's, I think, in real life, is warmer. Um, so yeah, I was thinking of knitting the No Frills sweater raglan by Petite Knits. Uh, probably because I've been influenced by the lovely Rebecca from the Crea Bea podcast because she's knit like four since she started her podcast and she just started another one uh, but I do think that maybe a cropped raglan would be nice I'm trying to go more into cropped well not I think a shorter sweater one because I I like to wear high-waisted jeans and I want to just kind of goes a little bit over that would be nice and I think with my new confidence from doing the ranunculus, that a no frill sweater would be just a ticket. I might have a bit left over because I have one, two, three, four, five skeins. We'll see. So yeah, that was really nice. Uh, if you're in the market for a non super wash uh, advent calendar, I highly recommend um, Studio Solas because she's lovely and she makes lovely things. My last <laughs> advent calendar is still unused in yarn form anyways, but I think that I'm going to make a blanket out of it. Um, and I'm not sure how to pronounce this, but I'm pretty sure it's a mitered corner uh, blanket because I know that uh, Inga from the Knitting Traditions podcast, she is knitting a scrappy blanket from squares. She's just knitting a thousand squares and then crocheting them together probably. But I know that I will enjoy knitting all the squares, but I will not put them all together into a blanket. So I thought I have to make something that grows. Um, and then I googled, I googled, I don't know, scrappy knit blanket pattern or something. And I came to the Pearl Soho site and they have a free pattern, um, which is very basic. You just make these, I guess it's called mitered. You set up like, I don't know, 45 or 50 stitches. Um, and you just decrease in the middle so it becomes a square. Um, still leaves you with uh, ends to weave in, but I think the likelihood of me weaving in the ends is higher than the likelihood of me crocheting together many, many squares. 
So that's my plan, uh, long-term plan, maybe a summer plan or who knows. So yeah, that leaves us just personal updates. Um, so as you uh, might know, I am a teacher, a high school teacher. I teach English. Uh, I'm always pretty self-conscious about that because even though I think that my English is pretty okay, um, I still make mistakes because in spoken language people make mistakes. I make mistakes in Dutch as well, um, but in English as well. And it makes me feel self-conscious when I'm like, yeah, I'm an English teacher and I make mistakes. But I am. Uh, and I teach two graduating classes of two levels. So they are they have two school weeks left and then they have a holiday and then their exams begin. But it's been grading mayhem over the past few weeks because they had to write essays and being dyslectic essay grading essays just takes me a lot of time um and you have to be very careful because you know it's important grading is always important but for a graduating class you have to be both fair and kind but also strict because you know you have to set a level that we expect um so yeah, work has been not that fun on the grading aspect and the, and the pressure and... So yeah, there hasn't been a lot of time for research on knitting. Um, all right, three guesses who got cut off by the battery. I thought I charged them all and I didn't, so I had to wait. Um, I completely forgot where we left off. I think we were doing personal updates, um, school or work, busy exams. Oh, I think it's that I haven't been reading. I'm still listening and working through a short history of the world according to sheep. Um, and I'm still thinking that I might get the physical copy of the book as well. Um, I haven't had much time to research any of the knitting history uh, because I've just been grading essays. That's what I've been doing. <laughs> um, yeah. I am going to play D&D &D this afternoon, so that's fun. Oh, and you might want to see what's behind me. So this is my bookcase. Uh, this is part of my books. I have all my craft books upstairs and then all the books that might be interesting to my students. I keep at school in a little library uh, where they can just borrow books if they want to. But um, behind me, this is the first bit of art I ever bought. It was, I think, 50 gulden, this was before the euro, and it's a little violin player, because uh, I used to play the violin. And this is a painting by my lovely grandmother. Um, she used to paint a lot. And then these are part of my pretty books. There's a Shakespeare letter bound up there, and there is a Alice in Wonderland in pink letter. And yeah, just a combination. Oh, look, there's hair on the plant. Uh, I got this one. This is a print by the lovely Emma from Woolly Fibers. Woolly Mammoth Fiber Company. Um, I got her Equinox box before Brexit, so that's a couple years ago. But yeah, it's uh, it's lovely. Actually, I'm going to pick you up and show you. Let's let's do an impromptu book tour. Um, oh. okay, hold on. I've never done this before. Bear with me. Okay, so that's my grandmother's. That's my other grandmother's. Um, so this grandmother I used to call Oma, 
and this one is definitely not Oma because she would get upset. Uh, there's some Pippi Long stocking there. And um, oh, let's not make you dizzy. I'll cut it out. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is my classics uh, bookcase. Um, and there's this book I can heartily recommend uh, about wintering. Um, also, if you're not familiar, these are boob lights and they're just little lights that you can put on your finger. Um, this is my Harry Potter shelf, but I don't really like the author anymore, so it's a bit hidden. Um, highly recommend Period Power, d, &D book, self-improvement, me as a youngster, and then notebooks, like, I guess poetry, stuff I'm reading, Lord of the Rings down there. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna put you back. Oh yeah, this is our, let me show you this. These geese I got from my grandparents. My grandfather used to be two meters and 10 centimeters. So he's the big geese, goose. And then the small one is my grandmother. Isn't that lovely on our piano? Okay, hold on, I'm gonna put you down. Oh, can't see myself. <clears throat> okay, you're back. <clears throat> yeah, so I hope this was a sort of coherent podcast ish uh, that the sound was okay um, I really like recording in the morning because on Sundays my husband always sleeps in and then I don't feel self-conscious about uh, talking to a camera um, but the Sun is still shining in my studio upstairs in the mornings now because spring is on the way so I don't know let me know do you like the setting do you like the studio better? That, that's weird. Um, on Thursday, I'm actually going to Tessel to get my hair cut and colored. Going, I don't know what I'm doing yet, but I need a change. So that's my plan. I hope you are well, um, that you take care of yourselves in these strange times. And, um, yeah, that's all I have for you, I guess, today. Take care, and I'll see you soon. Bye. We were not going to do the bye anymore. <clears throat> we're just going to leave it at take care.